How do we exercise the animals in the brain? Well, okay. David Barish, who was an evolutionary uh, biologist, made a very important observation once upon a time. He lives in Seattle. And in the Seattle Zoo, there was an ocelot. And ocelots are some of the most gorgeous animals on the face of the planet. But this ocelot was anything but gorgeous. This ocelot was covered with scabs and, na and, and big chunks where there was no fur, naked flesh, which doesn't look good on an ocelot, believe me. Um, and the zoo tried everything in its power to figure out a way to keep the ocelot because the ocelot was chewing at itself and pulling out huge hunks of its own fur. Um, and the people who ran the zoo could not figure out how to stop the ocelot from destroying its natural gorgeousness. Um, and then somebody noticed something. Ocelots in the wild bring down birds. And they have a problem when they've brought down a bird. They want to eat it. They want to treat it as meat. But guess what a bird is covered with that's inedible, that really, you know, sticks in your throat, sticks in your nose, makes it hard to breathe, tickles you. Uh, makes you sneeze. Feathers. So ocelots, over the course of time, have developed an instinct, and it's built into their brain. And that instinct is to pluck. Once they've brought down something the equivalent of a chicken, their instinct is pull all the feathers off the chicken. Well, that instinct is so deeply built into the ocelot brain that if you don't give an ocelot a chicken to pluck at least once a day, the ocelot needs to pluck something. Can it pluck the bars of its cage? Can it pluck the food that you give it, which is all nice and processed like dog food? No. What's it got left? It's fur. So it sits there yanking its own fur off. So the people in the Seattle Zoo learned how to give the ocelot something that was the equivalent of a chicken every single day with all the feathers so that it could exercise this instinct for yanking the feathers out of something. And guess what happened to the ocelot? The ocelot's coat filled back in, and the ocelot became gorgeous. Now, it, once upon a time I was editing a magazine, and it turned out to be a rock magazine. And when I dove into the minds of the people who were reading my magazine to find out what I could give them better than anything else that they would like better than anything else in the world, it turned out what they loved was Alice Cooper. And as I was on my way to work, it disturbed me every day. Alice Cooper used to chop up baby dolls with an axe. And... He was violent. And I wondered, am I helping kids become violent, or am I exercising the animals in their brain? Am I giving them a violent outlet, a fantasy violent outlet, that keeps them from needing to kill each other, to do real violence? Now, that's still an open question, but one fact remains. In the decades after the decade of Alice Cooper, the amount of violence in teens in America declined then new video games, violent video games came in, and it declined even further. Were we giving kids, were we training kids to be violent with video games and Alice Cooper, or were we exercising the animals in their brain?